So um, we, uh, we're back a little bit. It's been a while since I did this as far as recorded a lesson. But uh, we're going back to having, um, um, I'm going to teach a lesson one day and uh, I'll teach another lesson another. So we're going to have to, uh, to uh, work, with, work with the videos again. So, um, so in the uh, first example here, we're actually going to cover 4.2 uh, on this particular lesson. And then we will uh, we'll work with 4.3 on Friday. But uh, it asks us to work with a partner. We don't necessarily have to do that. But we're going to sketch a line that has a given slope and passes through the given point and find and find the y-intercept and then write the equation of the line. So if we refresh on what we were doing uh, last week, uh, we would start out with a point on the y-intercept. Um, so let's uh, actually we'll just make one up. So if I write out y equals... Uh, two-thirds x plus one. Uh, if we went to graph that last time, we'd start at one on the y-axis. From there, we'd go up two, and we would go over three, and therefore we would draw a line, and my line would look something like that. Um, here in this particular example, they're giving us a point that's not necessarily... Um, it's my, my point is here, not necessarily on the y-axis, but we're still doing the same exact process. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start with that point and we're going to use a slope. The slope is we're going to go up one and over two. So that puts us there. We could also go down one and left two and that puts us there. I could go down one and left two again and that puts us there. And I'm only doing this so I don't have necessarily a straight edge tool or at least I haven't figured out a straight edge tool on my particular, uh, on, on this particular program. So, um, Nope, doesn't look like I uh, can see this so that I have a... Oh, I have multiple colors. Wow, look at that. Sorry. I just... Uh, squirrel. Okay. Anyway, we're going to draw a line here. So uh, my line, if I could play connect the dots, was going to go through those points. Okay. Um, and then it says write the equation of this line. So uh, going back to last time, last time we would write an equation in y equals mx plus b form. But last time, all we had to do was we had to put a slope in for m. Well, we already know the slope is one half. That's not too hard. However, the y-intercept is a little bit different here just because we're going to have to estimate this. It doesn't actually cross at a specific point. It actually crosses at one half. Um, so again, we're going to get that from our graph. So on part b, they're wanting us to do the same thing. Uh, it has a negative slope, so we're going to expect it to go. You can't see my... It has a negative slope, so we're going to expect it to go in some type of negative direction. Okay, going like that. We just have to figure out, uh, does it is it shallow or is it steep? And negative 2 would indicate it's going to be pretty steep because we're going to go down 2 and over 1. We're going to go down 2 and over 1. We're going to go down 2 and over 1. Down 2, over 1, down 2. And we continue that. We could go up 2 and left 1 if we wanted to. Uh, but again, we're going to use those points to make a line. Okay, not very well, but that is our line. Again, we're going to make the equation for that line. So y equals, my slope is already here. My slope is negative 2. My y-intercept is also down here at negative 2. So that means my equation is going to be negative 2x minus 2. Now, here we have point-slope form. Um, let's talk about a little about point. We're going to use point slope form to find the equation of a line. When we use point slope form, we're going to substitute for y1 a slope and an x1, and then we're going to get it into the right form. Okay. Um, so there, we'll have to do a little bit of algebra for this, but uh, those three highlighted areas are what we need to make this work. So if we look at the name of this, it's called point slope form because it needs a point. It needs an x, y coordinate to be plugged in there, and it needs a slope to be plugged in there. So that is why it is called point slope form. Uh, just it, it's not just pulled out of thin air. If we go back to our slope formula, the slope is equal to y minus y one over x minus x1. That's how we find a slope. And again, the subscripts are only there to denote the difference between two. If I wanted to pull this out and I don't want it to be a fraction anymore. Um, so I am going to multiply by x minus x1, so that way I can eliminate, I'm going to multiply by x minus x1, so that way those can be canceled out, and I end up with this equation. I'm also going to flip it around, 
So we're going to write y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and that is my point-slope form. So all I've done is I've taken the equation of a slope, and we have rewritten it in a different form. But otherwise than that, it's the same exact thing. Okay, so here we go. We're going to practice. Write the equation of the line in point-slope form of the line that passes through the given slope. Okay, so point-slope form is going to be a little bit different. I was looking to see if we got some slope-intercept form in here, because I'd be uh, uh, appalled if we did not. Well, I'm not for sure what Big Ideas is going to want. Okay, sorry. Uh, write an equation in point-slope form of the line that passes through the given point and has the given slope. So again, we're going to start out with y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And again, we are substituting for here, here, and here are going to be the three places that we need to substitute. So my y value is 1, so y minus 1 equals, my slope is negative 3, my x value is a negative 2. And so we end up with y minus 1 equals negative 3x plus, whoops, getting a little ahead of myself. So that is going to be the answer in point-slope form, okay? However, we're not really used to, accustomed to graphing from there, so more than likely, um, on the test, I'm going to ask you to carry that one step further. We need to get that into slope-intercept form, um, which we'll do, in a, we'll do in a second. We're going to leave all of our answers in point-slope form. Um, I need to run out to your homework and see if, you, if any of this goes into slope-intercept form. Um, Actually, I'm going to take the first one into slope-intercept form. We're going to draw it right up here. Okay, right now I'm at y minus 1 equals negative 3 times x plus 2. I'm going to distribute that negative 3, so y minus 1 is equal to a negative 3x minus 6. I'm going to add 1, and I'm going to add 1, so that means that y equals negative 3x minus 5. So now I've taken it in point-slope form, and we put it into slope-intercept form. Form. So that's the only difference between the two. But um, maybe maybe uh, math, uh, our big ideas, is just going to let us get away with point-slope form, which is fine. In calculus, you wouldn't go any further. So y minus 5, because that's my y value, equals 2 times x minus 3. And there was no additional steps there. We were done because uh, there's nothing to simplify. The only thing we did over here was we simplified... We simplified the, uh, why aren't you writing? Did I turn you off? Did you die? We simplified the two negative signs there into a positive sign. Okay, but that's all we did. So here there's nothing to do. Y minus a negative two equals negative one times X minus a negative one. We're gonna wanna simplify all of those signs. So Y plus two is equal to a negative X and here I am distributing again, not what I wanted to do. Negative 1 times x plus 1. And again, because it's telling me to leave it in point-slope form, we're going to stop there. So this is just an exercise on dropping it into a, a formula. Okay, There isn't any whole lot of calculations to go here. y minus 0 equals 4 thirds times x minus 5. No, nothing to go here. I mean, we will just stop here. Nothing to do. Y minus 4, because that's my Y value, equals 7 times X minus 0. Then we have uh, Y minus 2 equals negative 1 half times X minus 1. And that was it. I mean, there's nothing to it. If we're leaving it in point-slope form, again, there's always some extra work. If we need to convert it into slope-intercept form, there's some extra work involved. However, the directions said, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I need to follow the directions because big ideas, it's just going to uh, have us do that. So um, uh, I'm going to babble now a little bit so I can run out into big ideas and uh, take a look at this assignment. Uh, and see if uh, what exactly we have to do um, just to make sure
All right, let's move down here. Write an equation in slope-intercept form. Okay, um, so we actually did something like this already. We have talked about, sorry, I'm trying to work on something here on my computer and it is, Not playing nice. All right. Um, so uh, again, we we did this in the last section of four point one. So um, yeah. Sorry. Um. So if we look at this, we are, again, we're going to count one, two, three, four up. So it went up four and it went over one, two and over two. So it went up four and over two. So this has a slope of two. So this is going to be two X minus four because negative four is where it crossed the Y axis at. Again, since all of these are, I, 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 there's no sense in going to all the extra work of, uh, we'll, we'll do that in a second here. Um, so again, we're going to go down one, two, and three. So it went down three. We'll change colors so we can understand there's a difference here. It went over one, two, and three. So it went over three. So that means that it has a slope of negative one. So this is going to be negative x plus three, because again, it crossed the y-axis at three. And that's all we're gonna do for all of these. So um, I really feel like we're, we're killing time here. So we're gonna do one more and then I'll just write the answers in. So uh, on this one, again, from here to here, if I grab my, you know, we'll keep doing my color differences. We went up one, two, and uh, one, two. So it went up two. And then went over one, two, three, and four. So it went over four. So that means that my slope is going to be one half. So my equation is y equals one half x. And then it crosses here at a negative two. So I'm just gonna write these in, provided that I can actually do these in my head really fast. But this is gonna be a negative one fourth x. That's all there is to it. This one's going to be y equals, um, we're doing some funky scaling here. Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, my y-axis is scaled funkily. So we need to make sure that we're paying attention to that um, as far as um, how far up and over it went. Um, it's actually, it actually has a slope of three, it uh, looks like. Crossing down here at, um, negative six. And our last one over here, and again, the good, there's no funky scaling. That's sorry, that's what was throwing me off last time. I, who knows? That's gonna be negative two X plus four. All right, moving on. So again, this uh, giving it to us in function form. So we talked last time when we see it in function form, this is an ordered pair through negative three, negative one. This is an ordered pair of negative two and four. And so we're going to find the equation of the line that goes through those two points. Okay? So that means we're going to have to find the slope of the line first. So we're going to go with negative 1 minus a negative. Oops, getting in a hurry. Negative 1 minus 4. So we're going to take the two y values and we're going to subtract those. We're going to take the two x values and we're going to subtract those. So we end up with a negative 5 in my numerator and I end up with a negative 1 in my denominator. So it has a slope of 5. So again, we're going to go back to our, our point slope form. We're going to go back to y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, my point slope form. And again, we are going for there, there, and there. Those are the three places that we need to insert something into my equation. 
So we're going to go with um, y minus. I'm going to pick a y value. I'm going to pick 4 just because I can. We'll get to the same answer either way. y minus 4 is equal to my slope turned out to be 5. And then that would be x minus a negative 2. Now this says it wants us to write the linear function. We're going to have to go with y equals mx plus b. So we're trying to get into that function. Um, so that means that we're going to have to go with y minus 4 equals 5x. Um, that's going to end up being a positive, so plus 10. And then my last step is we're going to add 4 over. We're going to have to add 4 over, and we're going to get y, y equals 5x plus 14. Now we have to remember that it says write a function, so we write f of x equals 5x plus 14. Okay, we smushed all that in there and got her done, but that's where we're at. So on the next one, again, we, if we create the ordered pairs there, that's negative 2, 1. This is going to be 1 and 7, and we're going to have to first find a slope between those two points. So 1 minus 7, because those are my two y values. Negative 2 minus 1 are my two x values. So we end up with a negative 6 over a negative 3, so I end up with a slope of 2. Again, so this is, this is, I don't say drill and kill, but uh, this is going to be, um, uh, a, yes, a, a large, it's the same skill over and over again, okay? Um, and actually, uh, one of these, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm babbling now. Y minus, we're going to pick one of those Y values. I like to avoid negative numbers, so we're picking 7. And then we're going to go with uh, 2 times x minus 1, because that has to I have to pick from the same pair. Um, we have to get this in a function form, so y minus 7 is equal to equal 2x minus 2. We'll add the 7 over, so we end up with y equals 2x plus 5 when we combine those two. And so, again, function a new function is f of x equals 2x plus 5. Um, doing one more, um, we're going to go with uh, negative 1 and 2. We're also going to go with a point 3 and 3. So again, I, I hopefully you're trying to, I, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, I'm bad. Uh, 2, whoops, why did it do that? 2 minus 3 divided by negative 1 minus 3. So we end up with a negative 1 over a negative 4, so we end up with a slope of 1 fourth. So we're going to have to deal with some fractions on this one, which, uh, you know, it is what it is. y minus 3 is equal to 1 fourth times x minus 3. We're going to distribute to get y minus 3 is equal to 1 fourth x minus 3 fourths. So now what happens, I'm going to squeak this adding the 3 over. And we're going to end up with y equals 1 fourth x. But now I have negative 3 fourths and a positive 3. So that means it's going to be positive 2 and 1 fourth or 9 fourths or however you end up getting that fractional answer. Um, that's, that's where we need to be. Okay. Um, how do I want to do these? I wish I could just pause my video and... Uh, do all these and then you can pop it up but uh, I guess I will work my way through these um, and then we can uh, do this um, so we got 0 negative 2 actually I'll talk my way through this one too 4 negative 1 so we have a slope of negative uh, 2 minus a negative 1 my x values are 0 and 4 so we end up with a negative 1 over a negative 4 so I have a slope of 1 fourth now, this one's different because I have a slope of 1 fourth, but because they gave me this ordered pair right here, that is my y-intercept, and I don't have to go through all the work. So why go all through all the work when I don't have to? So that's actually uh, uh, modeling the very first one that we did, uh, section 4.1. So this is going to be 1, 0, and this is going to be 0, 8 are going to be my two points. My slope is going to be 0 minus 8, which is my two y values. 1 minus 0 are going to be my two x values. 
we get negative 8 over 1, so we end up with negative 8 for a slope. This one is going to work the same exact way because uh, they gave me my y-intercept of 0, 8, so that means it's going to be negative 8x uh, plus 8. On uh, number 18, we're going to have to go back to the whole version of it. This is 3 and 5. This one is going to be 2 and 6. We're going to find a slope between these two lines. So the slope is, again, it's the difference in my y value. So 5 minus 6, that's going to be over 3 minus 2. So I end up with a negative 1 over a positive 1 or a negative 1. Now this one we're going to have to work all the way out. We're going to have to use that point slope form. So y minus 5, it doesn't matter which one we pick. Negative 1 times x minus 3. So we end up with y minus 5 equals negative x plus 3 when we distribute the negative 1. And then we're going to add that 5 over. So we end up with y equals negative x plus 8. Or, again, it's a function of be negative x plus 8, but that's ir irregardless, that's where we're going to be to be at. Excuse me. Uh, tell where the data in the table can be modeled by a linear equation. If, uh, explain, if possible, write the linear equation as a uh, y as a function of x. Okay. So again, we want to look for, is this linear? So this goes back to what we tried to do at the beginning of the last chapter, determine if something is linear. So we can see that we're going up to, we're going up to, we're going up to, and we're going up to. So that works out. Um, I am going to go up by... 50. We're going to go up 25. We're going to go up 25. And we're going to go up 50. So because these were constant and these were not, this is not linear. I wish I could uh, undo what I did, and uh, hopefully we're sh you were let me know I was messing this up. Let's go back to this for a second. I, I completely goofed this. I, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Okay. So I know that this went up 50. However, this one only went up one. This one went up two units, so that's why it went up 50. However, this one went up one. So it looks like we have a constant rate of change because when it goes up 1, it goes up 25. When it goes up 2, it goes up 50. So that means that uh, I'm going to have to eat my words. This is linear. We can do something with this. Okay. So this has a slope of 25. So it looks like it goes up 1, excuse me, up 25 and over 1. So that means we're going to have a slope of 25. And so now we're going to write that linear equation. So, uh, again, I always want to pick ones with zero in it, so I'm going to pick that one right there. So we have to remember that uh, y minus a negative 35 equals, my slope turned out to be 25, times x minus zero. And so y minus 35 is equal to 25x. And then we'll add the 35 over. And we'll have that equation. So but it wants me to write it as a function. So when you see your homework assignment, it will be whoop, we lost the next. It will be that. Okay. So if I'm going over this one, and because I've, 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 I've botched the other one, but uh, anyway, it is what it is. Um, 
we we can see that we don't have uh, we're going in, um, we're going up we're going down going uh down up and then we're going down and then we're going up again and up again so uh, again that is not going to be my x values continue to go up um, so this one is gonna be the one that's not linear All right, Craig is driving at a constant speed of 60 miles per hour after driving for three hours. His odometer reads 265 miles. So we had to say constant speed because we have to have a constant rate of change. He covered 60 miles in, excuse me, he, he is driving at a constant speed of 60 miles an hour. So Y equals 60X would be my formula that I start with. Uh, after driving for three hours, his odometer reads 265 miles. Write a linear function D that represents the miles driven after H hours. What does the odometer read after seven hours of continuous driving? Okay. Well, after three hours, the odometer read 265 miles. So, we can actually start out with y minus 265 equals 60 times x minus 3. So that means that uh, we have y minus 265 equals 60x minus 180. We'll have to add the 265 over. So that means that y is going to equal 60x and whatever that turns out to be, uh, 85. So uh, a, a function D of X, whoops, H, okay. So again, understanding what it wants. So like when you put that into big ideas, we're going to have to change the variables around. It's going to have to look like that. So just pay attention to that. Anyways, as long as I really didn't botch this up, we're looking for D of 7 which is going to be 60 times 7 plus 85. And uh, that's going to be 420 plus 85. So I'm, it's going to be 505 miles. All right. Well, that wasn't too painful, I hope. Um, but we'll do parallel and perpendicular next time.